Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you with thanksgiving. We come to you, O oh Lord, humbly and asking you, O oh God, to be with us and continue to be with us and, and teach us your ways. We thank you for your precious spirit of truth who is doing that. And we ask you for ears to hear. We thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for a place to worship openly and freely. We just bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord. Now, Father, as we submit ourselves to hear your word, we thank you that the scriptures, oh Lord, are written for our learning. And we would see what is written by the Spirit, oh Lord, pertaining to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as concerns him and us, his body. We thank you, Lord, now. We yield to the Spirit of truth in Jesus' name. Be magnified, Father. Be magnified, O oh Lord, within us, your people. In Jesus' name, we give thanksgiving. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We visited Psalm 20, and in Psalm 20, praise the Lord, go back and just read it. We won't reteach it, but I I'll go back and re read it to put it in perspective so you can see where we're going. At uh, verse 1, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saith his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. When we develop this scripture, of course we always see our Lord. And I want to go back to verse 5, because this is something that's been just dwelling, just dwelling with me where it says, we will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up banners. Our is put in by the translator. In the name of our God, we will set up banners. Thank you, Lord. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. But the first part of that verse, we will rejoice in thy salvation. Salvation for us is the person and work of Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why his name is, is Yeshua, Jesus, because he will save his people. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's in his name we will set up banners. Banners indicate victories. You see that our being put there, that's why we be very careful in reading the scriptures. That's the spirit of the Lord to, to be our teacher. Praise the Lord. So then, <laughs> It is in Christ that we rejoice. And you wonder, I heard something that, that was so very disappointing to me one time. I went to a, a, a meeting, and this sister said to me, she said, I just want my joy back. And if you ever know him, know him, Joy doesn't go any place. So this is why it, it's, it never gets tiresome to me to preach the, the center of our joy, our salvation, Christ Jesus. Like, like Father Biden was saying earlier. What, what else do we need to sit on if all our help comes from the Lord? Why go outside of that when you need help? You see, I don't, I don't understand that, but it's easy for some people to do. So. It's in the name of our God that these banners are set up. Name connotes nature. The name power 
of our Lord. Hallelujah. Banners are set up. We went to Psalm. Remember that? We went to Song of Solomon and we saw something. I, and I reminded us, what maybe a couple years ago, we taught from Psalm. And it's like we're not just picking things out of a hat in this ministry to choose from. God has us on a divine course. You see that? Hallelujah. See, some things are really, really changing. And whether we see it or feel it, that's got nothing to do with it. Things are changing. The, the power of God is becoming evident in our lives because we're listening to him. This is something that you don't just hear and, and believe and nothing happens. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know? This is, this is for a purpose to bring glory Amen. unto him. So hallelujah. So then, we went to Song of Solomon. You can go there if you want to, but I have the verses written out. You can listen. And it's in chapter 6. Psalm 6 and 4 says, Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirsa, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Well, what's happening in that verse? The, the, the Shulamite is praising the king. And then you get to verse 10 in the same chapter, he's praising her. He says, who is she that looketh forth as the morning? Fair as the moon. You hear that? Clear as the sun. Terrible as an army with banners. In other words, she looks just like he does. Because she's rejoicing in her salvation. Who God is, and the in the name of God, banners are set up. It's His victory that's our victory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So then, let's look at what He said about her. Who is she that that looketh forth as the morning? What does the morning do? Think about the morning. Think about the morning. Those of us that are up early, about as the morning. What? Listen. Darkness. Darkness is rebuked. You have the beautiful morning that's covering over everything. Remember I said everything responds to it. What starts to happen in the morning? Things start to wake up. Everything is responding to the morning. So this is the way he describes her. She looking forth as the morning. <clears throat> She's fair as the moon. Listen, there's a day working in her. If you can see morning and compare it to the moon, the moon comes out when it's, when it's dark. Uh, the evening and the morning are a day. This is a glorious day of Christ Jesus, hallelujah. And everything about her speaks to this day. That's why the banners are there. She's living in the power of this day. We are living in the power of this day. We rejoice in our salvation, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. These banners are set up, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. It says she's, another thing about her, it says she's what? Clear as the sun. This is, this is pure light. Listen, nothing's hiding under shadows here. She's got light, daylight. Hallelujah. We ask God. I, I, there, there, sometimes I'm studying or things will be in my heart. Haven't presented them yet. Just, just hide them in my heart. Because I'm waiting to hear from the Lord on some things. I, there's some things I want clarified. And when I, I'm at the point now, I don't, it's okay what somebody else said, but I need to hear from God. All right? I need the Lord speak to, to speak to my heart. So then he's like that. The sun is always there. The sun of righteousness. He's always faithful. Just sometimes I'm not even thinking about it. Be, oh, 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 that's it. That's it. Praise God. So I thank you for that. She, listen, clear as the sun. Every, every light is on this. There's no hiding. There's no hiding um, anything from us. Glory to God. It says, and, and this word terrible. Terrible is a word. It means frightening, but for us, it means what's reverential to us is frightening to an enemy. You see that? Terrible as an army with banners. You see an army with banners, that's a, sick, that's a sign of some conquest. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't just step up on that and mess with it, you know. So that, that, gets the, that commands. That commands respect, you see that? That commands reverence because of who he is and who we are in him. Glory to God. And so then, she say in Psalm 5 and 10, she says, My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. 
That word chiefest and banners are one and the same Hebrew word. That's worth repeating. We need to remember that. He's the chiefest. So everything on, on this, that we have on display should be him. Amen. You see that? Glory to God. The chiefest among 10,000. Praise God. So, in this banners, we want to look at some things because there's some words interchangeable in the scripture. And all these things point to our Lord. We're reading the Psalms because he said, Jesus himself, after he was raised, said that there were the Psalms that had things written concerning himself. So, we want to see him, praise God. So, when we see the word banners, we think of uh, an ensign a standard, glory to God, or a sign. So we want to look at, just, we're looking at our Lord. Now, let's go to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, because we know these prophets, what do they do? Spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So if they're prophesying, they're prophesying about Messiah. So let's go over here to Isaiah 5, and we'll want to look at a verse. Isaiah 5, and... See where it won't start. I don't want to leave anything out of context. Text here. All right. Look at verse 26 there. It says, <clears throat> we're looking at, 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 at another word for this, this banner. So you can see our Lord. This, this ensign is another interchangeable word. Verse 26 says, and he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them. Now this hiss is, listen, it's got a purpose. You don't just look at what it does, it's got a reason. If, if you want somebody's attention, you want them, you want them to come near. If in the call, there's a coming near. Okay, this is the meaning of, you may say whistle or call, but the, the idea of it is to bring us near unto him. See that? So it says, and, and will hiss, unto them from the end of the earth and behold they shall come with speed what? Swiftly. Swiftly. See that? Listen to the rest of this. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed nor the latchet of their shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp all their bows bent. The horses hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it, or carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. You see what's happening with this, and when he calls for us and moving in this, this power, just like she has his glory with the balance, now you see how it's done. Is his strength that's doing this? Yes. Then this power, none's weary. Nobody, nobody is stumbling. Glory to God, Hallelujah! And they are equipped. They have all the weapons of their warfare. If you would turn these into spiritual things, Isaiah is seeing it, and Christ is going to come fulfill it. So then, it would be spiritual things. See that? Right. Yes. Hallelujah. It, for the last verse says, And in that day they shall roar against them like the roar of the sea. And if one look into the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. This is the power of a day. This is all describing. When you see this, it sounds so terrible, but it's describing the power of what Jesus Christ has done. Like you get over in the Revelation, and you hear all these things, and if, if you filter them through the natural mind, and they can be maybe more scary for this culture than that culture, because you're filtering it through what you know fear is. But the thing is, it, is, it takes this to describe the power and the action that Christ Jesus took in his obedience unto death. Hallelujah. It was this great and this, this, this terrible. It's frightening to an enemy, but for us it's what? It commands our reverence. Because our God was doing valiantly. Hallelujah. Through him strongholds were pulled down. We were saved. We were restored unto Father, bless his holy name. So we see the incident here. In Isaiah, another look. I love this prophet, the way he talks about our Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 11, we've, we've talked from this many times, but it's, it's always worth 
worth refreshing, Bishop Paul. Hallelujah. You, you see this? Right. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse, verse uh, 1. I'll read verse 1, then we'll skip up a couple of verses, then we'll skip up about a little bit. It says, There shall come a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Listen now. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, Spirit of counsel and might, Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. This is for a reason. This is not to, to, to lord over anybody and like people have perverted things. This is for a reason. Because what it's going to do? It shall make him of quick understanding. Right. What? First of all, in the fear of the Lord. I, I, people can be gauged so easily. You can tell who fears God and who does not fear God. Amen. You can really tell who, who really fears God. Some people may think they fear God. No, you're not fearing God. <laughs> you not you don't know what fear is. You're not fearing God because of the, the action, you see. It says, He shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of the ears. Here's the key right here. But with righteousness. All those things we just saw. Back over and over, we just finished reading from Isaiah. All those things that sounded so great, great and terrible. For the enemy, they're scary. But for us, that's righteousness being worked out. You hear that? That's the work of righteousness. Righteousness is, was undoing all that was unleashed through disobedience. You see that? Glory to God. So then he reproved with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. See, if we would do follow his example, this is not with, with carnal warfare. See this? This work in righteousness. It says that he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. If somebody would preach the gospel, Amen. you would start to see changes. Amen. I'm telling you, people in regions where the gospel is, is saturating that area, it, it's a big difference where it's Amen. not. Amen. You go anywhere in the world, if people are hearing truth, there's a great big difference. You see that? Because of what this says. <clears throat> and with the breath of his lips shall slay the wicked. Praise God for his precious Holy Spirit. Now let's skip up to verse, verse 10. It says, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign. Here we back to this word again that's synonymous with, with, with like banners, signs, and so forth, standard. An ensign of the people. See, this, in the Psalms, it's really speaking of our Lord. He is, listen, she's got banners, it's him. It's because of what he's done, glory to God. We shall stand for an ensign, what? Of the people. To it shall the Gentiles sing. What are the, to, to what is it? The ensign. He is the ensign. Shall the Gentiles sing. And his rest shall be glorious. Goes on to say, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover. Y'all hear this word? Recover. Recover. Restore. See that? Hallelujah. The remnant of his people which, which shall be left. They scattered out in some places. These are geographical locations back then, but they're spiritual places for many people today. <clears throat> you see that? Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and the islands of the sea. What is he going to do? He shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So we see here Christ Jesus, this, this banners, this standard, praise God. Now, I don't know if you remember, it's been a, yes, it's been a long time since we actually taught in this ministry about the camp placement. So just a little, ex, ex, um, we'll go back just for just a slight review, and I'm sure it will come to many of us, and those that get the message by media, if you would just read Numbers chapter 2, 3, 10, everything the Lord's getting ready to share with us, you can come right up with this. So let's go to Numbers. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Numbers uh, chapter 2. While we're looking at Christ Jesus, he's, he's our banner. 
Yeah. There's a banner over us that says what? Love. Mm -hmm. If we're going to understand one day what it is Jesus has done for us and as us, we're going to understand that clearly one of these days. Yeah. And people are going to walk in power and understanding. Glory to God. And Hallelujah. It's already yeah. can do it with an understanding. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> then we will do it. Numbers chapter 2. And let's see. He's, he's talking about um, Aaron here. So let's see. Now I think it's so so wonderful that you were you were talking about the Levites and you read from Hebrews seven and you were talking about the Levites. We're gonna see something very powerful. And if it was old covenant, think of what it's gonna be in new covenant in Christ Jesus. But in Numbers, Numbers chapter two. I'm sorry, the placement of the, the cans. It says, "In the Lord, verse one, and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying." Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own, look, standard. Hear that? See, the Lord wasn't just given a bunch of instructions. It seemed like they had so many ordinances, so many rules to follow, so many ways to do this. All, you need all that to know who. You're talking about a coming kingdom in the spirit, and you needed all these these natural things what, that were a pattern of the truth. At best, they were types and shadows. You see that? So then it says, every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the congregation they shall pitch. Now, it's then it goes on to talk about where everybody was located. It's important that we see this without doing a whole lot of reading. I'll just kind of like give you, give, try to like condense it down here. On the east, of, on the east, there were three tribes. On, on the south, three. The west, three. The north, three. So without reading, if you're just listening to this, Judah, Zebulon, Issachar were yep. on the east. Yep. All right? When, see, that's the that's the coming up. When when that camp was set, let me say this: when that camp was set, when, when they were when they were camped and not not on the move, if you had an aerial view, it would look just like a cross. Mm -hmm. See that? Hallelujah. So then, on the on the west, you had you numbers um, two, three through nine: Judah, Zebulun, and Issachar. Well, Judah is, is, is praise. The, 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 he, Christ is called the, the line of the tribe of Judah. Then you had Zebulon. <coughs> Zebulon means a dwelling or hab habitation. Issachar means reward. Look what's coming. When this new day comes, this is the first thing you should see. Somebody here, God, I wish I, I feel like, like just teaching it all over again because it's so powerful for us. Glory to God. But what this is speaking to, these and patriarchs didn't work just given names out of a hat. I don't care who their mothers were. You see that? It's, it's who their father was. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. So, see, see, God is running things here. Then you have on the south, if you number is two, t uh, 10 through 17, it'll tell you Reuben. Well, we know Reuben is a what? It's a son. Mm -hmm. right. See that? He has Simeon. Listen, Simeon's name means hearing, but look up, family. His name has a deeper meaning than hearing. It not only means hearing, but it means hearing with acceptance. What good is going to do you to hear the oracle that you're not going to accept? It, you see? So that's what his name means, hearing with acceptance. Then you have Gad. Gad means, you can take two minutes from it. It could mean good fortune or a troop. Gad is a troop. Remember that? We went through all these names. We already taught this. Then on the west, Numbers 18, 18 through 24. Later on, if you want to read it, you can. Numbers 2, 18 through 24. You had, listen now, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin on the west. You hear this? What has happened here? Ephraim and Manasseh. They are Joseph's sons. Joseph's sons with Joseph's full 
brother on the west. You hear this? <clears throat> Ephraim means doubly fruitful. See that? Remember Manasseh? He named him Manasseh because what? God caused him to forget all that he was put through. But the end of the matter was, God was using Joseph to do what? Save his whole family. Yeah. Oh my, praise God. Save his people. To save his people. Yeah. Glory to God. And then you have Benjamin, who is the son of the right hand. Glory to God. See that? Mm -hmm. See that? You, so then, if you just start thinking about these standards, and if you just really think about what, what is being said from within them, you can get an idea of what their standard looked like. You know that? You get an idea. Well, over there with Judah is the head of the, the head tribe. That's the line of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> you look up, you see the lion. You're still looking at Christ. No matter which tribe, you're going to see an aspect of Christ. You've got Reuben, the head of another standard of, uh, 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 of that side, the, the south side. You see him first. Well, you know that's a son. So that would be the what? The, the, the man, Luke. Right. Well, we've seen this in, in the God. It just come, it just flows together. If we would listen, we just look at this west side. Well, Joseph, you you the sacrifice. You saved your brethren alive. Amen. You you the sacrifice. So then the, the ox on your standard. Right. <clears throat> you see that? Mark's gospel. You can set a, set Mark, lay Mark over that. And then you have on the north side. You read Numbers uh, two verses twenty five through thirty one. You got Dan. The first one. Dan, we've been judged. Amen. Everything all said and done. This is the work in righteousness. Now is the judgment of this world. The, the victory, here he is in his deity and his power. Well, thank you, Dan, Amen. for showing us the eagle. And all the rest of your brethren with you. Asher, now that you got the victory, Asher means happy. happy. <laughs> I'm so happy, I don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Not the life name means that he, whatever he got, he got it by wrestling. You see that? Look, you got to know how to wrestle. Yes. You don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So it's the power of victory. If you see these types and shadows mm -hmm. in the old covenant, think about what we look like in the new. Well, okay, you say, well, Sister Bob, now, that, now that's, that's 12 of them. But she didn't say anything about Joseph. You got Joseph's sons there. Yeah. See, you got this double reward for your shame. Listen here, everybody. For your shame, you shall have double both his boys. Yeah. Why? Because God is getting ready to take the tribe of Levi for himself. Mm -hmm. Levi's not mentioned in here. Why? They're going to be camped right around the tabernacle proper, the so that they can take care of the work of the of the tabernacle. Those other camps, are, if you would look at that today, if you said this building was a tabernacle, they would be camped way out there past Whetstone somewhere. Mm -hmm. Would you? Know, would you rather be up here in the sanctuary? <laughs> but still, it was one people, one one unit. Right. No matter how far out they were, they were one unit. This is what God is trying to show us today by His Spirit. Like, like He said, you see, see me, see yourself in me. We see this one unit with these tribes. You need to see everybody. Right. We see this so beautifully, so beautifully, because, listen, with Levi, now how many remember, this is Numbers. So if you're familiar with the book of Numbers, how did they number? The men had to be, it was just the males. They had to be what? 20 years and up, except for one tribe. Except for one tribe. Levi didn't have, Levi was counted from infancy. Somebody please hear God. Please hear the Lord. You know what God told Moses? Look, you take all the firstborn from the other tribes and you redeem them with Levi. Somebody please hear the Lord now because you, we don't realize what our purpose is in this earth. You take all the firstborn from these other tribes and you redeem them with the children of Levi because they are holy unto me. You see that? See what the redemption was? Here was this picture all the way back then. But you know what? It was some left over. So for those left over, this is what God said. He said, look, you take, 
take five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary for each of them, and you redeem, you give that money to Aaron and his son. So see that oh, even way back then in this in this shadow, we see this perfect plan of redemption. God knows the point is nobody was left out. Someone left over, but nobody was left out. You see that glory to God, hallelujah. We need to understand this. Levi, Levi Union. It's such a beautiful picture. You're going to be in the priesthood because this whole thing is a picture unto me, said God. I'm going to have unto myself a kingdom of priests. Yes. What you got to look like? Where you got to be from? Now, this is the, the picture. This is the shadow. We, the elder already blessed us and, and helped out with the message this morning. We know that our Lord sprang from Judah, but this, oh, this imperfect priesthood, this ironic priesthood, oh God, you had to be from the tribe of Levi because his name means union. You can't be, if you're not in union with God, what you going to do? Right. You have to be from this tribe, which, <clears throat> which speaks to union. It could have other, other meanings too, but it means union. You see that? Then, the high priest is Aaron. You can't just be anybody. Because look, over in the Song of Solomon, he's already described her, and she's looking like him. It says a lot more about her than it did him. She's clear as the sun. So everybody's going to have to be able to see this. So this high priest then means light bearer. He means light. So in order to be the high priest, look, in the, in, the, in the shadow, you had to be in union with God. You had to be one of Aaron's sons. You had to come from light. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But we need to understand, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. If you see from the old covenant, from, from the tribe, tribe of Levi, if you were counted from a month old or from a baby, you, when you in the spirit, when we're born again, look, don't act like you got to do all this growing up church. Stop putting these restrictions on God's people and making them go through all this and all that. That man has set up because from that infancy, glory to God, if it was like that in the pattern, when you say yes to Jesus, you're born again and you enter into all the rights of the firstborn. Stop putting up all these, all these, uh, walls and things before people mm -hmm. when they can enter into their inheritance which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. No do's and don'ts. No do's and don'ts. Where'd you get that rule from? Who are you to tell somebody what to do and don't when God said he is? He is. You can't put do and don't on he is. Or I am. Glory to God. You hear that? God is good to his people. I get very, very excited. So my point was then, we're looking at banners. We're looking at incense. We're looking at, at the standard, praise God. So we saw then the power of this camp. One body, many members. Okay, so it's the bottom. You're hanging out in the Old Testament. Well, let's go to the New. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 12. Let me show you something. And every, every, captain, got, every captain of the tribe... Uh, God appointed a son. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God Romans, gave a son. Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about Christ, what? We're talking about him head and body. Mm -hmm. Head and body. Verse uh, of one of, of um, Romans chapter 8. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I beseech you what? By the mercies of God. Not by the zillion rules somebody's put up, but by the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So you see then, by the mercy of God, we're able to present our bodies as living sacrifices. Your body doesn't get to be a sacrifice because you did this, 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 and this. It's because of what he did. We got the banners because of what Jesus Christ did through his obedience. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Listen to this now. By the renewing of your mind. I was growing up in church. I didn't hear anybody say anything about a mind being renewed. I just heard a lot of rules. See that? You're transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. Listen, something has happened 
because of what Christ Jesus did for us and as us. When you receive that, then the mind, listen, that is received through our minds. Amen. And that's how we're transformed. The more we learn of him, the more transformation is complete. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but the, to think how? Soberly. Soberly. According as God <clears throat> dealt to every man the measure of what? <clears throat> Faith. See that? Amen. For as we have many members in one body, this is where we're going, and all members have not the same office. Well, the Lord showed us a picture of that. If that was the case, everybody in the old covenant would just be in one tribe. Why would you need all of that? All that is showing us something. You see that? When I get ready to praise the Lord, I'm so glad that my hands want to cooperate with my mind so I can, can play. I'm so glad that my, my, my voice would want to cooperate so I can, can say unto him, utter unto him things that I believe that are pleasing unto him. You see that? I'm so glad in case I, if I wanted to do a holy dance that, that my limbs would cooperate. Hallelujah. You see that? Glory to God. Many members, but it's, listen, what? In one body. So just like we care so much about ourselves individually, we need to think that way concerning Christ. He's the head and we're the body. It's what he wills, what he wants for his body. Glory to God. So then, they say verse 5, it's, so we, being many, many, a one body in what? In yes. Christ. <clears throat> you had an aerial view. You had a you had a of that old old covenant camp at, at rest. You will see with, with you will see well a, a beautiful shadow of, of Christ altogether. You will see that because of what they're speaking to. You will see that. So then it says and everyone members one of another. People can't get this. I know people can't get this. I'm not just so much talking about the people. I'm talking about those of us that are in, quote, leadership. You just can't get this. You know why? It's too much division and schism. Mm -hmm. No, people don't, don't think like you think. They, they, the blood of Jesus didn't affect them according to your, your idea of things. And that's not what God is saying. See that? So it's everyone, everyone members one of another. We are members one of another. Since then having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether what? Prophecy? Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry? Let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth, what? On teaching. He that exhorteth, exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And it goes on and on. Well, you could take, you could either take this example, or you could go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You will hear he said to me the same thing. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Many, many members, yet one. Isaiah 62, if you don't mind. How are we doing here? Amen. Isaiah 62. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad to know Levites chosen from infancy. It reminds me of Paul. So he, he was, he praised God from his mo mother's womb. You see that? Glory to God. I love to listen to little children. I love to listen to little children. I really do. <laughs> Just do. So honest. <laughs> love this to Isaiah 62. We're going to 62. Praise God. Isaiah 62, there's a couple of verses here. Go to verse 10, 62 and 10. Go, ahead for me. go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highways, gather out the stones. What are you going to do? Lift up a standard for the people. See that? Don't listen, I say it like this. Build your church. Build it big as you want to. Do whatever you want to do. But when it's all said and done, Raise the standard that Christ Jesus is in the midst of the people. All right? Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. 
Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work or deeds before him. Well, doesn't that sound like that East Camp he's, when he comes? He comes, and it says, what, what are you going to say? That salvation coming. It's our Lord. His reward is with him. Okay, Issachar. His reward. I think this is so powerful that this, this tribe was in this with this group. Because this, we read of them, they knew the signs of the times and what Israel ought to do. So then, you may have some waiting on something. Well, this is available for you if you would believe. Issachar's sons know the signs of the time and what Israel ought to do. Issachar's sons, listen, it won't be put off to tomorrow. Look, we know the signs of the time, what Israel ought to do. Praise God. Any spirit filled person can, listen, the identity of all these tribes were brought together as one in Christ. Amen. And we're in Him. Amen. Praise God. That, that the, with His Holy Spirit ministering through and to us. Any of that power when it's needed should come forth. Praise the Lord. So glad that we, we see this. So then it says, verse 12, and they shall call them what? The holy people. This is why I told you, how can I, how can I tell you all these wonderful things? Jesus Christ has done for us and as us. And turn around and call you all kinds of things for the child of God. To manipulate and control you and then you will be thinking here what the prophet said is the holy people mm -hmm. you're holy unto god yep. didn't god say the first fruits were holy unto him yep. in christ jesus if we in him we're a new creation if we holy uh, we are holy unto him yep. it's not for you to be bad to do. your mind will never be transformed if you don't hear of of, of what's true of us in christ right. You see that? The redeemed of the Lord, you're the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. That's what I got to tell you. That you're holy, you're redeemed of the Lord. Now, if you don't know the Lord, we need to talk. Amen. And if you know, you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, I'm not going to keep telling you that you're a sinner. Because you're not. Amen. That's who you used to be. Amen. That's not who you are now. That, that's who you used to be. Before coming into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? The thing is, this is available for everybody. But it has to be received and believed and acknowledged. Glory to God. You see that? It's available for everybody. You can't tell me it's not because I already saw in the, in the pattern of the shadow that everybody's been redeemed. Everybody's covered. Even look at one enough Levites to go around. This is what you do with it. You can put grace on it. Five shekels. Amen. Don't tell me it ain't covered. Glory to God. Amen. I thank Amen. God. We Gentiles ought to be rejoicing <laughs> in our anthem. Glory to God. It says, And they shall call them <clears throat> the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, listen now, sought out. A city not forsaken. Isn't it? Not forsaken. Beulah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help Bob. Not forsaken. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So then, the last one we said, we said we look at banners, and when we talk about banners, we're talking about incense, standard, sign. One last one, real quick. Sign. This is how easy it is. A wicked and adulterous generation seeking after a sign and none shall be given it, save the sign of the prophet Jonas. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Hallelujah. So you see then how in the Psalms, tucked away in all these Psalms, is truly written of our Lord, just like he said. Yeah. The banners, the victory banners, that's him. But he's given them to us. The only way the world would know they're on display is they got to see them through her, through her, the church, the camp, you see? Victory banners. 
That's why you have the pattern. So now say it this way. If in the old covenant, you can see the camps, even when they move forward, there's a good study because when they move forward, you'll see the order, how the order they went. When, when the camps move forward, you listen, if you saw these, this, this movement or you saw the, saw the people at camp, you, you would know that, look, the victory is among them. Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. They got banners. Other, other the, uh, people that didn't know them <coughs> would have to say, they got banners. Mm -hmm. yep. Their victory, God was with them. God was in the midst, midst of them. Yep. Don't put my God off of me if he was in that camp and if that's a shadow. Don't do that because I'm not going to believe it. And I'm not going to teach that to anybody that God is not with us because he is. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So then the sign, Jesus Christ our Lord. Sure enough, three days, three nights. Hallelujah. He rose. After, after, listen, in that three, in that three day period, all those terrible things we read about, where, they, where you see the routing going on. And the wrath being poured out. That way, that's where it looks to the enemy. All that was being accomplished. But for us, it was redemption. I tell you one thing. I thank and praise God. I'm part of a holy city. I'm part of a holy city. Listen, listen, family. And we are being sought out. You hear this? Part of a holy city being sought out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank God. I bless you. Bless you what? How? Blessings of heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our God. We're his people. Lord bless all of you. Thank you for all that you that you do for him. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm.